All right, this is one of my favorite kinds of questions where we're dealing with two blocks. They're connected by a string that go over a pulley. These are kind of interesting questions because they have their own set of challenges. I want to make sure that we saw at least one of these. All right, this is a little bit more challenging question. This is probably the hardest type of question we'll deal with in this class. But the, what makes it difficult is that we're going to want to end up treating it as a system. All right, we have talked about systems a little bit. This says, in the image to the right, the masses are both at rest. The mass of M1 is 5 kg, and the mass of M2 is 3 kg. Find the minimum coefficient of static friction that would allow M1 to stay at rest. So it's saying, what does the coefficient of friction have to be over here in order for this guy to stay at rest? All right, now, in order to do that, the first thing we're going to do is, in this case, we're going to do a free body diagram, but we are really only interested in the forces that are going to cause my objects to accelerate, okay? We're going to look at the whole system here. Now, the system is a group of objects that are accelerating or moving or rotating together. All right, now because M2 and M1 are attached by a string, they're all going to move together at the same time. Now, we're gonna go ahead and put the forces in here, okay? On M2, you've got the force of gravity, and I'm gonna label that the force of gravity two, because that's force of gravity on M2, and then we've got the tension in the string. Those are the only two forces. Over here on M1, we've got the force of gravity, which is down, I'm gonna call that force of gravity on one. I've got the normal force of the table, which is up. I've got the tension here pulling to the right, and then it does say that there's some friction over here pulling to the left. Now, a couple of things that I want us to notice before we write any mathematics. The normal force of the table and the force of gravity are both vertical. They're going to end up canceling each other out, right? This block, M1, moves from side to side. It moves horizontally. So the vertical pieces are going to cancel each other out. That normal force of the table and the force of gravity are not going to cause acceleration. All right? Now, tension right here, this tension would cause my object to accelerate to the right. Okay? However, I've got this tension right here, and because that's the same string, those two tensions are equal. And one of those tensions is going to, this tension right here is going to cause my thing to rotate in this direction. And the other tension is actually pulling in the opposite direction. Those two tensions are what we call internal to the system. It's like when we had two blocks that were pushing on each other. Or sometimes we had two blocks that were tied by a string and they were both moving along the table horizontally. We said that the internal tension would not affect the system. So we're gonna do the same thing here. So what we're left with now is actually only two forces, right? We've got the force of gravity, which is going to pull in this direction. It's going to cause my pulley to rotate and go down that direction. And then I've got the force of friction, which you can see that it's pointing to the left, which is actually the opposite direction around the pulley. And so I'm gonna call this direction as positive and the friction going back that way is negative. So I'm gonna go force of gravity two minus friction equals mass times acceleration. And that is the sum of the forces equals ma, but I'm only looking at the forces that will cause my pulley to rotate one way or the other, and not the tensions because they cancel out, they're internal. Now, I can calculate the force of gravity on block number two. That's just mg, right? I can go the mass, which is three, times gravity, which is 9.8. And so I go three times 9.8, and when I do three times 9.8, I get 29.4. So 29.4 newtons minus the friction equals, now mass times acceleration, I did say that I want it to stay at rest here. Now if block one is at rest, then block two is also at rest. And so we're gonna put zero acceleration here. 
And we can solve that and we'll end up getting that the friction is equal to 29.4 newtons. All right, so we now know the force of friction that is required in order for my block to stay at rest. Now, the question is asking for what coefficient of static friction is needed. So we're gonna go back to the equation that we learned today. F equals the coefficient times the normal force. We're gonna be able to put that 29.4 in for friction. Now I need the normal force. So to get the normal force, we're gonna go back to our block number one here and notice that the normal force is up and the force of gravity is down and it's not accelerating vertically. So either we just say those two are equal or we write an equation and solve. And so we notice that the normal force of the table is equal to the force of gravity on block one, which is mg for that block, which would be five times 9.8. We multiply five times 9.8, we get 49 newtons. So that's gonna go right here for the normal force, 49. Now we take that 29.4 and we divide by 49 and we get our answer that mu is 0 0.6. Ta-da, we got the coefficient of static friction. Now the coefficient of static friction can be bigger than that, right? Because remember, that the static coefficient of friction can be larger than that number. But if it's any smaller than this, then it would not be able to provide this amount of friction. And so the coefficient has to be at least 0 0.6, though it could be more. All right, and that answers our question. We've worked through all five of them. Congratulations, and uh, we'll do some more in class.